And I'm just going to preface the first nine months by saying only in the last three months had we taken investment. So in the first six months, we're bootstrapping, literally bootstrapping. And we're in a, in a, one by, we're in a two by two meter office in Woodstock, me and Ross, and a guy called Hanu, who's a designer. We knew we needed a designer. And we just go digital. But because we were starting to sell shoes, we started to get interest from South Africans all over the world. And we knew that if, if we could get to London, we could build Feltskin in the UK. Because we just built it in South Africa. So it, and remember, this was all new to us. We, it was the first time we'd done it. And, and weirdly, we were the first true e-com only footwear brand in South Africa. Um, so we had no uh, trepidation or nervousness or, about doing a foreign business. So we literally got onto a plane, booked an Airbnb, built out the UK, feltskin.co.uk, which is six months younger than South Africa's business, flew back and started selling shoes in the UK. And so, because we were naive as like you could be, so we do this, and from a brand perspective, it's, it's growing and it's getting like a good following and we're selling maybe 150, 200 pairs of shoes a month at this point. And I'm in London for my for a second trip there because we had to take shoes. And in those days, we couldn't afford to send containers. So we would fly on Emirates with 70 kilograms worth of luggage each, which wow. we just had shoes on. And we would unpack the boxes in London. That's how we built the business, literally selling shoes, like delivering them out of hotel rooms. And so we built it. And I was there the second time, and I get a phone call from a guy called Chris Smith, and he goes, Nick, I'm the editor of the Sunday Times newspaper. And I'm like, that's great. How can I help you? And he says, I was at a party last night, and I saw Harry, Prince Harry, wearing a pair of, and he told me, Pinotage Feltskin. And I said to him, have you got a picture? And he oh goes, that's why I'm phoning you. And he says, tell me about this brand. And I said to him, I told him the story, and he, I said, it's the precursor to the desert boot, which it is. And I said, I don't know how, how Harry got hold of it, but it's, a, it's our shoes. And he says, I'm going to write an article in the newspaper. And um, the, the first Sunday, he wrote an article about the concept of what a felt skin is, the history of, of the sh potentially the oldest shoe in the world, if you think about the koi, and it actually predates Syrian footwear. And so the, he writes the article, and it's like, okay, cool. And the article comes out, and nothing really happens. And remember, we're selling about 150, 200 pairs of shoes a month at this point. Oh the second Sunday comes out, and my phone goes nuts. Shopify just goes bang, bang, bang. I think we sold 600 pairs of shoes in the day in London. And it was because he put in a piece, I think it was 30 words, and a photo of Harry saying, Prince Harry's a fan of Falskin. And that was it. That is it. But we were smart because what we did is that we put out a press release in South Africa saying, the Times of London has published a piece about Feltskin. Oh. And so we made the front page of Business Day. And so South Africa all of a sudden had this massive press moment. And all of a sudden we were completely validated from a press moment. So the UK was the first. Prince Harry was the, really the very first one. And then the second one which is a crazy story in itself, but we went into the US. At this point, we've got a listed company as a partner, and um, we go out there because our uh, suitors, f some folks wanted to invest in our business called Fun Brands, and um, we go out there, and they tell us they want to make the investment, but they've got partners that have seen the product, and they're really keen on coming to join the investment. So part of their due diligence, they had to reveal who they're thinking, and so I said, okay, cool who your partners and they go Ashton Kutcher and Mark Cuban and they'd like to join the investment so we're like okay <laughs> it's not a tough one um, struck a deal and the next piece of news that came out globally was that Ashton Kutcher who as you know mm -hmm. is a massive tech investor as well as Mark Cuban had taken a position on a South African footwear brand and the next thing, Ashton is wearing the shoes at a Mavs game, mm. NBA, famous picture next to his wife, Mila, and global news goes nuts about a new footwear brand that Ashton Kutcher has invested in. And so those two moments, they're sort of influencer-based, but had nothing to do with us, like completely non-engineered. But the reason they both worked wasn't because we'd started a brand and that because we'd called it something cool. The reason they both worked is because we had about 300 years of brand equity baked into our story. There was this history that mattered. 
Harry didn't wear our shoes because he thought they were cool. Harry wore the shoes because they're part of the African diaspora mm. globally and has been for 300 years. 